speaking of authenticity and honesty, Rita, uh, you 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 love the Baltimore Ravens. I know that you can talk about all sorts of things, but you know you're rooted in Baltimore. You stand up for Baltimore, and we just heard Lamar Jackson and Mike Tomlin talking about their respective teams, the Ravens and Steelers. With all apologies to the Cleveland Browns, it's not personal; it's just business. Cleveland, I don't think y'all are really in this race even with the win over Baltimore and the same record as Pittsburgh. I think as usual, it's going to come down to the Steelers and Ravens for the AFC North. And Rita, tell me why. Tell me why you think the Ravens are going to win this division. Because I'm going to tell, cause I'm gonna tell you, I'm going to turn around and tell you why they can't, why they won't. But I'm you tell me why they will. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what you was about to tell me. So let's 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 go there. I'm gonna tell you what you were about to tell me, but then I'm gonna tell you why you was why you're wrong in that in that uh, logic, okay? okay? Because look, okay. I, I completely understand why you came up with and said that you think that the Steelers are gonna win. They are very well coached. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously they look decent um, now against uh, the Bengals with uh, Matt Canada being gone. I understand, yeah, yeah. but. There's a couple of things here, right? Uh, oh, also, okay. when you look at the Steelers' schedule down the stretch, the last five games are much more yeah. uh, simpler compared to the Ravens, yeah. who have the hardest schedule down oh, the stretch. Goodness. I completely understand the logic, completely. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I get it. I, that's what you was going to tell me. I already know, okay? I'm going to just go ahead and take the words out of your mouth because I understand that that's what you was going to say. And look, it is completely valid. All those things are valid. But let me give you a couple of things here. Uh, first okay. and foremost, the Bengals who I told everybody back in August uh, that they were not going to be good on defense. They are the 30th ranked defense right now. They lose base, they lose Bell to free agency, and they have not been good on that back end. I am not surprised here that they are not good on defense. So look, is it good for the Steelers to have 400 yards of offense because that's the first time that they've outgained somebody all year? Sure. I am not going to take that away from them. They did look much better. However, I'm just not going to clap it up for against a defense that's not good and has not really been good essentially all year. Also, you know who the last game of the season is? Do you? Oh, I know. Oh, oh, I know what's up. Oh, I do know, you know where, where the game is? is. And do you know where I it know is? where at the bank? At the, at bank? the bank, it is at oh, the I know. bank. It is oh, at the we, bank. Oh, we oh. So look, yes, they might be yes. neck and neck at that point. They could be neck and neck, neck. at that. Point. You better but hope. You better hope they're neck and neck. They, they, you better hope they're oh, neck and no, neck. No, at they that better point. hope that they neck and neck. Because as of right now, the Ravens are in first place and they're not. So they better hope that they yeah. neck and neck. Okay. Now, Rita. I definitely think that the Steelers are, are going to because they've been doing this all year, Holly. They've been finding ways to win football games that a lot of us feel like that they should not be in. But that's what happens when you have a great coach like mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin that can get mm -hmm. these guys going. My thing is, is that when it comes down to it. With, and they at home, they meaning the Ravens. I think that, they, look, they're already pissed off about that first loss because they know that they shouldn't have lost that be. game. That is, so, and they, they should, should be. be, absolutely. The mm -hmm. All three losses that they have, they beat themselves up. It ain't like the team beat them up either in any of them, including. Now, Rita, the hold on. Hold, Rita, 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 you, you no. say you're, you're from Baltimore. You're from Baltimore, right? Yeah. You're from Baltimore. Now, when you say stuff like that, you sound like you're from San Francisco, the excuse makers of the night. And you, and you know, you know that's not no, that ain't Baltimore. No that's San Francisco. No, making excuses those excuses. Are, the excuses are that they put their, took their foot Come off on. the gas. There's no excuse. They they were in position to win. The probability of winning and going in every single game that they had was over 95%. And then they found a way to squander them away because they don't know how to close games. They know this, though. They When I talked to Jadavion Clowney, he, is, he was very he unhappy. He felt like that they should be undefeated. They know that they are their own worst enemy. So it's not that the Ravens feel like anybody can beat them. Although when you look at their schedule coming down the stretch, it's a couple of losses I feel like they might have here, which is problematic. That being said, mm -hmm. if it comes down to the wire and they're tied, I'm taking the Ravens at home. I, I'm just, I'm going to do it because that, that defense for the and Steelers you know outside of TJ Watt, outside of Highsmith, ain't doing that good either, baby. Ooh, ooh. I, and, and I like you're so good, Rita. You're so good that you just put in. If it comes down to the wire, Baltimore reference. If it comes down to the wire, I'm going <laughs> with the Ravens. Hey, I mean that's just dope. Okay, now look, let's just get to it. You know I have so much respect. I have respect 
for the Baltimore Ravens. They just, their name has credibility here. The Ravens are credible. The Ravens are inside the velvet rope. The Ravens are uh, in the upper room. Okay, we, like I, I got love for the Baltimore Ravens. But you mentioned that schedule, and, and I think you kind of glossed it over because I, I did some I numbers didn't gloss here. It some over. Numbers. I, I said it's fair. Well, I said that the point is valid. But, yeah, but I but let's get let's go in there a little deeper. These opponents, the Ravens' remaining opponents, have a record where they're they're 17 games over 500. Yep. That's combined record. 17 games over 500. The Steelers' opponents are eight games under 500. Yep. And so, I mean, I'm looking at at, at the Jaguars. Oh, that's a tough game. And, and quite frankly, that Rams game. The only game where the opponent is under 500, that's not a that's not a, a, a gimme. So they got five and six against the Rams. Then they play three straight eight and three teams at Jaguars at Niners. Then the Dolphins, who you had beat last year, and then they exploded. Tua went crazy. Tyreek Hill went crazy, and you blew that game against the Dolphins. Yep. And then you have the Steelers, who you already lost to who you already blew a game to. I, I, I'm telling you, um, I'm going to stand by my statement. They better hope it comes down to the last game because the Steelers, 2-10. and ten. Their next game, the Cardinals stink. They stink out loud. Yep. They're 2-10. and ten. They got, they, They're going to be away from Arizona, and they still stink. You can still smell them away from Arizona. <laughs> the Patriots at 2-9. That, that they stink so bad. The Patriots are like a a good, I, you know. Man, as a matter of fact, I don't even have the Patriots in the Final Four for the college football playoffs. We'll talk about that later. They, they don't <laughs> deserve to be in that conversation. They don't deserve in that conversation. They're so bad. They don't. They play this little college, this collegiate game where they said we're not going to name our starting quarterback. It might be Mac Jones. It might be Bailey Zappi. Who knows? We cut Will Greer. We bring him back. Malik Cunningham might be him. And then you've got the Colts, the Bengals, who you just you just dogged them out. So I'm going to take your words for it uh, <laughs> at the Seahawks. Tough game. And then <laughs> final game of the year. Steelers Ravens. Uh, Rita, I'm just so thankful that this matchup exists. Steelers Ravens. I like where do you rank them? This is like for those who don't understand the psychology, the psyche of your typical Ravens fan, when you think about your number one rival, is it the Steelers? Is it somebody like, is it is it Pittsburgh who you just, that leaves a nasty taste in your mouth? You just don't like the sight of them? Is it Pittsburgh still? No, I mean, but it, it is the number one rivalry, but I think that there's too much respect there in, in, in between the franchises, which probably might not be a good thing at this point. So it doesn't leave <laughs> a nasty taste in your mouth because there's respect there. The ones that leave the nasty taste in your mouth in the AFC North are the Cincinnati Bengals because they do a lot of talking and they ain't got no hardware to back it up. The Steelers got six <laughs> rings. The Ravens got two rings. You know, the Browns don't really do too much. They they know that every time they, they start talking, things go bad. So they don't really do a lot of talking, but they got psyched up by, you know, going to two AFC championship games, going to a Super Bowl, and they just got a little mouthy. And it's funny because, Holly, ironically, you know, the enemy of the enemy is your friend. So Ravens and Steelers fans have kind of like collaborated here on the tagging back and forth of Bengals uh, fans. So it's a very interesting uh, division for sure. I think that there's a lot of respect there, um, but it is still one of, in my opinion, one of the best rivalries that the NFL has to offer. No question. And I, I think, um, and I don't know if the state, and here, here's the irony, you know, Baltimore, Baltimore, I, I'm just, let's keep it a buck. Baltimore is a better team than Pittsburgh. Um, Baltimore has a lot more ways to win games, but it's just really scheduling. It come down to scheduling, and that was really a bad loss. They've actually had two bad losses in the division. They're only two. Uh, the, the the loss to uh, they lost to Cleveland, right? Yes. Yeah, you know, they lost to Cleveland, and they had that that double digit lead uh, in the points. second half. Fourteen in the fourth points, quarter, they lose that the game. second half. In the fourth, in the fourth quarter. quarter. Yeah. 
two. So I really think it's going to come down to this. It's going to come down for the division. I like the Steelers over the Ravens. But if you say pick a team, oh, I'm on that fence. I'm dancing on the fence now because I picked the steel. I'm getting everything I want. So I picked the Steelers not to. I don't want any fan base to at me. So I'm placating. <laughs> I'm placating them both. I think the Steelers win the division. I think the Ravens, if I have to pick one team to go far in the playoffs, I'm going to go. The Ravens can go further in the playoffs uh, than the Steelers. And I just want to point out, bring that back up, Gary and, and Natalie. Bring that back up, that little, uh, that little graphic where I said I'm going to go with the Steelers. I, you have to know Pittsburgh to know you really can't take that brother too seriously. A brother wearing a Point Park University hoodie which is in downtown Pittsburgh, my alma mater. Got love for you. Thank you. Uh, of course. I mean, I, a, a guy who went to Point Park picking Pittsburgh. That's like, <laughs> I might as well wear like a thousand like sweatshirt or Morgan State, something like that. I mean, come on. Right. Then I picked the Ravens. So can you I really mean, take me seriously? Can you I take me seriously? Listen. All your points is valid. I, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you about that because it, it, the scheduling is very hard for the Ravens. That is for sure. I, my, 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 what I think is going to happen here is that both the Ravens and the Steelers are going to have a three and two stretch. And by the Steelers three and two, that means a late, a Ravens loss, which means that the Ravens win the division. But look, we've seen this before. The Steelers one time was 11 and 0 a couple of years ago. And look, they are what they are. Nobody thought that they should have been there either, but ultimately they are just a well-coached team. And it's funny how, you know, we think that they're having down years. We think that they're, they don't have a, a whole lot of talent. And then somehow, some way, they continue to find ways to win football games. I think Mike Tomlin and Nick Saban got the same deal. I think that they got the, uh, some type of soul deal going on because I just don't understand it. You know, you see what happened in the Alabama game last Saturday. Then yeah. you see the Steelers just uh. coming out, finding ways to win games. Did you? Did y'all sign the same soul agreement? I want to know. Because how do y'all just continue yeah. to find your way into conversations that we feel like we put y'all dead in the water and y'all just slowly rise up and find a way to resurrect Ooh. yourselves. <laughs> I can't, I, and, and I, I tell you, as, as we put the music on, as we put the music on, uh, I'll say you raise an interesting point. Is it the same agreement that Nick Saban and Mike Tomlin have? And okay, and I'm going to say this because I'm going to be saved by the music before you start to judge me. Can I get some of that? Can I get that same? Me agreement? too. Okay. Can Hello? I get? It? Hello. Ooh. All right. Hey, don't judge me. You might take it too. Y'all might a little take bit. it too. Just one little bit. All right. Listen. Hey, 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 Rita. I'm gonna make myself available to be punched around, to be yes. uh, to be laughed at, to be mocked. We'll we'll start with live moves coming up in a couple minutes. And then Vinny, Vinny Goodwill's gonna be here. I'm sure he got something to say about a college football game. I, you know, I didn't see it. Uh, something happened oh. on Saturday in, oh, you in Ann Arbor. Day, huh? I, I, I don't know what happened. I, I hear people talking about it, but oh. uh, I don't I'm believe. I'm going to remind you real quick. Coming up. I, <laughs> hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM channel 85.